filmed on location this week from Pizza Margarita in Gainesville, Virginia. Welcome to this week's episode of the Rubber Run Sports Show. I'm John Moore, joined as always by Rob and Papa. Rob, we're in full basketball season now. Absolutely. We closed the door on football last week. Um, so we got started Woodbridge at Battlefield Girls Basketball. Yes, we did. A lot of people upset that there's no football, but, you know, nothing wrong with being in the gym. Absolutely not. Especially come December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I got out. You know, we know Coach Anthony Mills pretty yep. well. Wanted to get out there and see them. And I saw, you know, the, the I, I didn't get a chance to see the Woodbridge girls last year. Right. But they were, you know, they were really good. They made it pretty far last year, and they, they're undefeated this year going into that game. So I wanted to get out there and check it out. You know, Battlefield's a great place yeah, to go watch a game either way. Um, the game – let me just talk about Battlefield first. Okay. All right. Game starts out. It's back and forth. It's 21-19 at the half. Battlefield got to every loose ball that there was. Every 50-50 ball, Battlefield was there. Right. Um, they had quick hands on defense. They, they were disrupting passing lanes and things like that for Woodbridge. They were, they were just disrupting everything that Woodbridge was trying to get done. But it was still Woodbridge was still up 21-19 going into the half. Aaliyah Moon, who plays for Battlefield, yeah. I saw her play a couple times last year. Obviously, the team's a little bit different. No right. Taylor Baltimore and things we like love that. Taylor Baltimore. Absolute best basketball name in the, in the area. Um, but yeah, Aaliyah Moon probably played the best game I've ever seen her play. She was terrific. I mean, she was getting to the basket. She was she was running the show. She was terrific in that game. Terrific. Terrific. <laughs> um, Marley McLaughlin, who we interviewed last year with Taylor Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, she was wearing the mask, the Richard Jefferson mask going in the game, yeah. But why? I didn't talk to her afterwards, so I'm not sure why she was wearing it, but Marley McLaughlin is great. Yeah. I mean, she's tough. She can shoot. She can handle. She can get to the basket. She can do a lot of things, and she kind of steadies that team in certain spots. Right. When they get a little bit out of control, she kind of she kind of reins things in. She made an and one at one point that the crowd started going crazy oh, for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I like watching Marley McLaughlin play. She's a softball player, too. She's a, she's a really good athlete. Um, but the mask, it's, <laughs> funny, you know, it's, it's not something you see very yeah. often. She had the mask on. Did you get a picture of the mask? Oh, oh there's, there's shots okay. of it all over. Yeah, okay. all over the highlights, there's shots of it. But, um, you know, what's funny is in that gym, you go to a guy's game and there would be four times more people. Sure. Not as loud. No, oh. <laughs> not as loud. The, the the girls' basketball players are the most enthusiastic Absolutely. group of kids that we see anywhere. Absolutely. They bring bring their own intensity. I mean, yep. it's it's great. Yep. And um, they also have Danielle Harrington, the Harrington twins. They have, but Danielle had 15 points in this game. She was really really good. Um, they're they're a tough. It's a tough combo they have right. there with Aaliyah Moon, Marty McLaughlin, yeah. and Danielle Harrington. It's tough. But they also play this. Uh, like, I don't know. Anthony Mills is, is great. I mean, he's a really good coach. We, we saw him at the Patriot Battlefield game, and he – the football game. Yeah. I know they want to forget about that one. But yeah. he, you could tell he felt like he had something special going on there this year. He had some young players that he was really interested in seeing how they perform. They do. And he's just – that team is smart. Yeah. They play smart. They play tough. And, I mean, their D was all – they were just pressuring them. They were all over the place. They had no – they had no fear. They had no intimidation whatsoever about the Woodbridge team coming right. in. 21-19 at half, 30-20 at the half. after three. I guess it was just neck and neck. Right. Let me just tell you about Woodbridge. They're ridiculous. I mean, they are ridiculous. They average like 70-plus a game. Go, going into this game, it was like 75. They averaged like 70 points a game. They had this girl, Cameron Platt Morris. She sang the national anthem. What? She sang the national anthem. They, they, they get everybody up, everybody's standing up for the national anthem. Something goes wrong with Battlefield's system. I don't know, it wasn't playing. Okay. So they, everybody's kind of looking around. All the Woodbridge players go, get up there and sing. She gets up there, belts out the national anthem. Well, she was great. Yeah, it was great. Oh, it was awesome. Um, then she goes back and she gets 10 points, four rebounds in the game. It's a pretty good night. It's a great night. Jasmine Forte, six points, 11 rebounds. She's tall. I like that name. Hey. You're going to like to watch her play, too. Jasmine Forte. She gets up. She can get rebounds. It's tough, to, it's, it's tough to do anything with her in there. But they have two guards, right? 
Their, their second leading scorer, uh, Taylor Willard, didn't even play. Mm. She was sitting out. But they have two guards, Paris McBride, McBride and Hannah Oliver. Remember last year uh, over at Patriot when we were talking about um, – Let's do Cook over there. We were oh, like, yeah. Man, he's the most unassuming, unassuming beast yeah. in the in yeah. the area. Hannah Oliver is there. Oh, really? She's small. She's skinny. There's a lot of people that I guarantee you she's had a lot of times where she stepped on a court where people are like, this girl can't play. Right. Yeah, she's got a crossover. She's one of the best three-point shooters in the area, if not the best. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, she's just got... She got bounced. She's got. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She is fun to watch. She had seven points, five rebounds, three assists in the game. But I'm telling you, you watch her play, and you'd be like, what? "This girl is just eating people up." <laughs> um, but without a doubt, a person on that team, Paris McBride. Yeah. Sat next to her dad during the game. Shout out to him. He was. Uh, it was evident that he was her dad. He was. You know, you know how it is when you right, got a guy. Right. He, I was like, you, are you Paris' dad? He was like, how could you tell? Because I'm all over. <laughs> but no, he's a good dude. We, we talked throughout the game. But she had 19 points, five rebounds, five assists. And then the, she even, it was tough going in the first half for her. She, she had some drives that didn't really sure. go the way she wanted it to. But, man, in the clutch, she was unreal. She's terrific. I'm telling you, you got to see Paris McBride play. She is tripped. Only a junior. This girl's going to be really good. Yeah. She averages 16 points a game. Willard, who was out, averages 14. And Hannah Oliver, the unassuming beast, right. 13 points a game. They play Osborne this week. They're winning by an average of 30 points a game. Oh, man. What was the final here? It was 48-41. Okay. That's what's, it, it, Anthony Mills knows what he's doing. He right. slowed that team down to 48. Yeah. <sighs> They're going to be a tough out. They are going to be a tough out. I'm yeah. telling you, there's, they're right up there. Yeah. There's a couple teams I've seen this year. Obviously, Oakton, Hayfield, Herndon, and Woodbridge. Those are the top four teams easily that I've seen this year. And that, Paris McBride, Paris I'm trying McBride. to tell you, she's great. Um, but you know what? Like, you know, basketball season's going. That's right. We know Woodson really well. Yeah, we were out there last year. Of course we are. We'll be out there more this year. That's right. And we have a chance to sit down and talk to their head coach, Seymour Stogie. Check it out. Coach, thanks for coming on. We met with you about a year ago. We were at the gym. You were a first-year coach. Uh, take us through that first year leading up to this season, your learning experiences and so forth. Yeah, for sure. Well, again, thank you guys for having me out here. It's a Sunday morning, drizzling a little bit, but there's no no place better to be than here if you can't be in the gym. Right. Um, John has that effect on people. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's the winning smile. Um, <laughs> yeah, like for, like you said, first year was last year, and it uh, is full of learning experiences. You know, we had, a, we had an older team last year as far as experience-wise, as far as the ability to uh, do some different things that we were asking them to do. And when you graduate, five seniors and you fill, you know, you reload with four freshmen on this year's team, um, you kind of have to go back to basics and really start reteaching everything and every team is new. Um, As far as last year goes, we were pretty pleased with our ability to get our kids to do what we wanted them to do right away. Um, Picked up two quick, you know, not quick, two big wins in late in the season over Mount Vernon and TC that solidified for our kids that if you play the right way and you handle your business, it doesn't really matter what the other team does. It's all about what we do. Um, and so obviously losing those, those five kids to graduation, we reload with you know a great eighth grade class coming up, but there's an adjustment there too for those kids to get used to the pace and physicality. And that's always what you know, when you jump up that level, it's the pace and the physicality that's going to make the difference. Um, and they're learning every single day. They're getting better every single day. Um, you know, one of our, they've each sort of had their little coming out party here already this season. So once we can put it all together, I think we're going to be in a good spot. So you, you just answered like four of my questions <laughs> going through there. Um, do I like, you've got, like I said, only three seniors. It is an adjustment, but how does it make your job different from last year? How does it? What what kind of what kind of effect does that have on your job? Um, we got really comfortable last year with having a lot of just things that we didn't have to worry about. Like you know, there's an issue on the team. Mary Ellen, go handle it, right? Like, but now it's we've sort of got to insulate some of our kids and be around them more, which is a great thing because I love being around them. They're awesome kids, um, and really start to understand how they learn. Because as a senior in high school, you've kind of seen nearly every situation you're going to see. 
as a freshman in high school or as a sophomore playing a new role, it's okay, we got to start from scratch and we got to communicate and, you know, we, we're all trying to speak a common language and, you know, I'll say something at practice and I think it's the greatest coaching tip ever. <laughs> I look around and I got kids that are like, what? <laughs> so, so really trying to slow down and take it back to basics and, and take it back to the fundamentals of, you know, even, even things as simple as passing and catching the ball. How do we do that as compared to how you did that on your eighth grade FCYBL team? Because it's different. We have different expectations for how we're going to catch the ball, putting it in tough position, being low, being able to see the court, peeking at the rim. So we're throwing a lot at them. It's like information through a fire hose. And so winter break is going to be really helpful for them because we can sort of slow down and take a step back and show them on film. And we probably watch more film than any team in the state. But our kids are visual learners, and they need to see themselves doing something, and then we can correct it and move forward. You talked about creating a culture there or changing a culture that yeah. was at Woodson last year. Do you feel like you made a good first stride in your first season? Yeah, yeah. I think we made tremendous strides in our first season. I think there was a lot of skepticism. Anytime there's a new coach that comes in, there's, a, there's excitement, but there's also skepticism. Like, what is this guy all about? Is he always this energetic? Does he always say these things? Yes, yes, and yes. Like, that's what I do. Right. And so our staff has been really committed to building the culture the right way where, you know, we're going to emphasize hard work. We're going to reward hard work. We have a kid on our team right now. She came to 75 out of 80 of our off-season, our improvement season and our preseason workouts. And the five that she missed, she was doing an internship at Walter Reed. Oh, wow. So I'm okay with you missing those five <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to go up to Walter Reed and do something yeah. with, like, biomedical engineering sure. or something. Um, you know, and it's showing now she's our leading scorer and she's our most consistent player as it relates to being able to come in, knock down a shot, being able to run our stuff. She knows the expectation. She's about five foot two. I put her at five three on the program just right. to make her feel good. Yeah, everybody needs, uh, that, everybody needs that extra right, inch, right? right? <laughs> um, but like that, but that's kind of the way that we're going to build this culture is there's not going to be an excuse of, oh, well, kids just didn't show up in the off season. And so we can't make a shot. No, like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it the right way. Right. And we've got kids that are starting to buy into that in a big way. And I think it starts with, you know, the, the freshmen that were on varsity last year, the freshmen that were on the freshman team, JV, you know, the freshmen now, even our juniors and our seniors, they've bought into that concept. But as we build it, it's going to be, you know, just the expectation from here on out is, we're going to put in the work because you can't be upset about something you haven't worked for. We call that being fake mad. Can't be fake mad. Right. You can't expect that shot to go in if you haven't shot it 10,000 times. Right. And so building that culture of hard work, building that culture of enthusiasm. You guys talked about it in the open about girls basketball teams bringing their own energy. Yeah. Because yeah. nobody shows up to watch our games. They're exciting. Shameful, you know? Woodson. No, no, no. Let me, let me say this. The Mal Vernon game was the first time in five years that students stood up and started cheering and started being the cavalry for girls basketball. Good. They were there in the second half for the boys game, which was followed us, sure. but, but we'll take it any way we can get it. Right. And after the game, we had kids that, that, you know, you see it on film, they're jumping out of the stands, they're excited. It was a one point, one point victory for us. Uh, you know, we hit nine threes in the game. Logan Doherty hits a buzzer beater right before halftime and the, co the place goes nuts. You know, and that's the environment we want. That's the environment we can build. I mean, why not show up on a Friday night instead of going and paying $5 to go watch the guys play? No offense to the guys, but come support your home team. Like, right. why not go undefeated at home right. for both boys and girls? That yeah. should be something that, that we want to do, and our students should take pride in that. And I think they do to a certain point. And that was a big step for us for the first time in five years to have a student section that's Great. going to stand up and bring energy and, and really help us out and win that game. Great. Love the Cavalry. Yeah. I love awesome. the Cavalry. They're awesome. I'm glad you brought up Logan because she's one of my favorite athletes in the area. She's terrific. I mean, she's terrific. Again, sorry. She, uh, she had one of the best passes I saw last year on the basketball court, but also she's an amazing lacrosse player. Um, yeah, she's great. Doesn't, doesn't hurt that her dad is a football coach over there, too. Yeah. But she's, she's awesome. It, you've got the holiday tournament coming up? Yep. Holiday tournament at Falls Church, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Uh, we play the Potomac School on the 28th. Okay. Um, and then we play Stonebridge next Tuesday at Stonebridge. So four games over break. We'll play anybody anywhere, anytime. We just got to handle our business. There you go. Yeah. Well, um, your top three scores, two sophomores and a freshman. Mm -hmm. 
What's that like for the for the older players on the team, the juniors and the seniors that you have? So, so it's funny you say that because it kind of goes back to the culture question, right? We don't have a transcendental star on our team. We don't have a Cortland Caskin, right? We don't have an Asia Shepherd. We have kids who love playing for each other. Right. And that's the other part of the culture when you get on the court. We can do all these things off the court, but when you get on the court, you've got kids that assist each other at a 75% rate. Last year was 62. This year we're at 75, which, I mean, that's unheard of. Sure. You know, and we've got kids that are averaging 8, 8, 8, 6, 6, you know, 4, 4, 4. We never know where it's going to come from, but we know it's going to come. Right. And that's what's exciting for our kids is they don't have to be the star. They don't have to be the man or the woman right. to go get it done. We don't have to rely on, you know, Doherty or, or Rachel Sherberg or Natasha to go out and score 35 points a game. We don't have to do that. What we do is we share the ball, we're up-tempo, we push it, and we're going to get the best available shot for our team. And so we talk a lot about shot selection, we talk a lot about what's a good shot versus a great shot. And as kids are starting to buy into that and understand those concepts, it it doesn't matter who's scoring. It doesn't matter who gets the credit for our kids. Like they just, they just want to go out and do it. Good. And it's a constant hunting process. We call them, you know, we, we tell the kids like, be a predator. Don't worry about if the shot doesn't go in. You got to hunt for that perfect shot. Right. And you know, our juniors and our seniors, they, they're more than willing to pass the ball to those kids because they know, hey, I trust you. You can score. Or I know you're going to find the person who can score. And that's how we run our practices every day. We don't have a single set play in our offense. Well, Coach, thanks a lot for coming out and sitting with us. Um, second time in two years. We hope it's Great, yeah. an annual thing. And we'll be out supporting you guys all season. Absolutely. So. I appreciate it. Happy holidays, guys. Yeah, definitely. Put a shot clock in high school basketball. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> yes, here's why we need a shot clock. Oh, no, there's no doubt that there, it's, oh. it's the dumbest rule ever. All right, thank you, Coach Rostogi, for coming out and spending yeah. a few minutes with us. Um, man, uh, I, I, next time we talk to him, we got to give him a chance to go off on the shot clock. Oh, I, know sure. that's, I know that's a big deal for him. But, uh, John, this week, going to see the, the Woodbridge girls wasn't the only thing I did this week. I know. You were out there. Hey, Briarwoods at Centerville. You know, I wanted to go see Briarwoods because we know those – you know, remember the two quarterbacks? Right, yeah, yeah, Skyler yeah. Springs and Jalen yep. Thomas, they're both on Sean, that team. Sean Springs kids. Yeah, and the Skyler Springs and Jalen Thomas both on that team. Jalen Thomas, didn't you tell me he used to play tight end and was converted to quarterback he's too? Big, yeah. <laughs> he's big, man. Yeah, but I went to check them out. They have a guy that's 6'8", Cam Timmons. 6'8"? Six, 6'8", eight. Six, eight, big dude. Where are all these? <sighs> you know I'm jealous. You know I'm, <laughs> I'm jealous. jealous. Six eight, my goodness! Just give me, give me five inches off of that, man. You could live at six three. Um, but man, he was—he dominated the paint inside there uh, in the first half against Centerville. Um, they have a guard too, Hunter Archer. Auk, I'm not sure it's A U C H. Not sure. Sorry if I mispronounced that. I won't try. No, but he's really good, man. He's—he's he's really good. He plays really well. And uh, Coach Chalice out there used to be the champ coach. Oh, really? Coach Chalice took the Briarwoods job. Right before Coin Dang came in there, it was, yeah, they yeah, a little tough, but <laughs> but uh, Coach Chalice, he knows what he's doing over there. Right. He runs that team well. They play, they play a, uh, they kind of slow it down and play a, like a slow it down style over there. Right. But um, they they're really good on defense. They get in the right spots. And like I said, you got those two quarterbacks out there. It's kind of funny watching them on the court together there because you don't get the chance to see Absolutely. that on the football field. But um, yeah, they've got they've got a really good mix there. Uh, the Hunter Arch had. 11 points. Um, Cam Timmons had 12, and then um, got him, Will Shin had seven. He's pretty good too. He's got a little. He's got a little bounce to his step. He's he plays pretty well. Sure. But they were they were up like 28 to 14 at halftime, looking like they were going to run away with it. Goes 11 11 in the third quarter. So I mean it's it's right there. They're still up 14. Uh, Brywood's still up 14 going into the third quarter. The Centerville has a dude. He's only a sophomore. Bryce Douglas. This dude was on fire in the second half. He had 21 points in the game, but he was on fire in the yeah. second half. I'm telling you what. What's the Centerville basketball situation like these days? Uh, they're they're five and two. Okay. They're pretty good, but they uh, yeah, this dude Bryce Douglas. Yeah. He's gonna be trouble okay. over the next couple of years. Um, 
He was terrific in the second half. Man, there I go again with it. Terrific. Terrific. <laughs> I got to stop saying that. Um, Don't stop. He was, uh, he was amazing in the second half. I'll say that. Um, he had, like I said, he had 21 points a game. I th- think he had three threes in that second half, but it was going. He was getting them back in the game. They, Briar Woods goes on to win 54-46, but Bryce Douglas, yeah, watch out. They got a couple of guys that are sophomores on that team. They're going to be really tough to contend with over the next couple of years. But their student section? Legit. <laughs> All right, they're legit, but in a, like – they borderline go. <laughs> they're a little borderline sometimes. They're, there was some name calling. There was oh, yeah. Some, yeah, yeah. They, but they were they were out in full force giving it. But but they yeah. Centerville student section man. <laughs> Those guys are relentless. I'll say that. Dude. I'll say that. I gotta come out and see them. You do. Yeah, they're, I love the student sections. Their student section's a good watch. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're leaning into it. They're yelling stuff at the players. It's funny, man. It's well, funny. There's been no better watch this season than uh, the gentleman we got a chance to sit down with. My goodness, no. Yeah. Hey, it's Lamont Atkins. Lamont Atkins. What else can you say? <laughs> we had Lamont Atkins here. Take a look. Rob, you are sitting here giddy right now. I am, man. <laughs> this is your guy. It, it, absolutely. It should be your guy, too, if yeah. you weren't a tech person. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey. Hey. <laughs> Watch my marriage rise right. here. <laughs> Obviously, the great Lamont Atkins sitting here. Absolutely. All right. First, before we get any, before we go anywhere, Lamont, 157 carries, 1,905 yards, and 31 touchdowns on the ground. That's one season. Yeah. <laughs> Explain the, yourself. <laughs> basically, what we talked before the season, and you you were really focused before the season. You you were ready for this year. What were you doing to people, man? <laughs> uh, it was really it was the offensive line. I thought I had the best offensive line in the state, and they just did what they had to do, and they just they got me free every single play. And it was just it was an amazing feeling. The speed helped to get them free. I was about to say some of those plays you weren't exactly free. <laughs> you didn't you did the freeing. <laughs> exactly. I'm looking at here Robinson. Okay, rival game. I thought it was a typo. <laughs> 13 carries, 331 yards, and three touchdowns. I did pretty good that night. You did pretty good that night. You can say good. that, man. You can say that. Is that is that the game that is there a game that you specifically think about being your favorite high school football game? That was probably my favorite high school football <laughs> game. Yeah, that's my best performance through all of high school, really. So it was a, it was a great feeling. Yeah. So do you know a lot of those kids at Robinson? I mean, the schools are so close. It seems like I, I know I know I knew a couple of them. They were one of the rival little league schools as well. Right. I was I was I played for um, SYC Springfield Youth League, and they were BRYC, and we were we always played each other. One, I'm actually, you know, Abe Mansory. Yeah. Yes, he was on the other team, so we used to play each other all the time. So it was, it was you crazy. Get, you just give them text messages three thirty one. Like what I, time is it? Three thirty one. I, I <laughs> no, it, was, it was crazy. It was a crazy night. So now this gives you something to do when you go home. That's right. <laughs> well, the season didn't finish out the way you wanted it to, but you obviously had a tremendous year. What will you take away from the season? Um, this is a great. Really, I just grew real close to those boys. Um, they're real, they're family now. So um, through it, for the rest of my life, they'll be close to me. Uh, we had a great season. We didn't get to where we wanted to be, but we grew close together. And we, we played as hard as we could, so that's not really all that matters in the end. What, what's your workout regimen? You look like a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I um, actually uh, I disenrolled in school because I'm graduating. I graduated early, so really all I do now is I work and I work out. So it's that's I eat, sleep, work out, go to work, come home. See, I do that. Some of that. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you got the eating and sleeping part yeah. down. Yeah. yeah, no worries there. No, no, right. In the middle of the season, you and I talked a little bit, and you were concentrating. This is the best part about the year. You were concentrating more on defense than you were on offense. And Could you imagine if he wasn't doing that? No. What was your favorite play this year? What was your favorite time of the year? Well, other than that, obviously, other than 13 okay. carries in the Robinson game. Oh, uh, really? I, I would, honestly, I'd have to say my favorite – uh, effort as a team was on defense against Centerville because I felt that the whole the, our whole team just on defense we just do everything through fumbles through an interception through a block punt until the very end uh, I felt that we played 
amazing on defense. I felt like we, everyone was doing their job. It was, it was just a great feeling, like everyone just being in the right place at the right time. Everyone's on, on their P's and Q's. Everyone's just focused and determined. And uh, that was, I think that was our best performance as a defense throughout my whole four years. So that was just a, that was one of my best moments um, as a Bruin, basically. So you're off to UVA. What's UVA getting? They, they're getting you can say it, a piece. <laughs> yeah, right. huh. I, I'll do whatever they need me to do. They need me to run the ball, catch the ball, block, whatever they need me to do, I'll be able to do it. So I just, I, I bring the skills that they're, they're looking for. So when I get there, I'll be ready to go, whatever they need. All right. Well, do you know what your schedule is going to be like when you get down there? Actually, I'm going down there on the 16th. So it'll be two days of orientation and then classes and workouts will start um, on the 18th. And I'll be doing winter workouts, which is like speed, uh, lifting, cardio, all that good stuff. We won't start the actual football stuff until later on, but uh, until then, it'll be I'll, I'll wake up, I work, I'll do whatever the workout is for that day, and then I'll go to class and I'll study hall, and I have free time at the end of the day. So, that'll so, be so I'm married to a hokey, right? And Rob is all Cavaliers. When you take that visit down there, do they talk about that rivalry? They actually, they re they didn't talk about it that much because it was like I went down there and it was really talking about just getting ready to get there. Yeah. And getting ready to, when I get there, I'm going to have to, um, they said I'm going to have to contribute. So I'll be ready to go on special teams and offense, wherever they need me, really. So we didn't really talk about rivalries, games or anything. We just talked about getting ready. to um, when I get there, I got to be ready to go. And you know what should be getting ready to go? The bow ties, they wear the football games down there. Right? You know what? I guarantee you they got them ready. They got them ready. They can't wait for him to get down there. Now, how many classes do you have lined up for when you first start? I'll, I'll take five classes. So I think it's, I forget how many hours that is, but I'll take five classes when I get there. All right. All right. Um, what are you most looking forward to about that UVA and college experience? Um, really, I just look forward to the experience. Uh, everyone says it's the best four years of their life. So I really look forward to it. Um, my family over there, they'll they'll miss me a lot, but I'll be able to see them every now and then. So I'll have freedom, and I'll just it, it's it's. I really look forward to it, just the whole experience of just being a college student. So Excellent. I'm sure pops will be down. It's only an hour and a half away. <laughs> Absolutely, man. He told yeah. he told me he's gonna be down there every day, sleeping in, <laughs> in my dorm. He's on the college here. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> you ain't gotta take no classes, pops. Party. <laughs> that's right. And uh, you know what? Living life as Lamont Atkins at UVA ain't going to be a bad experience, bad. that's no, for sure. It's not going to be a bad experience. No, man. Well, that's awesome. It, just stay off the corner. You got to stay off the corner. That's a trouble for you. Believe me, I, I can attest to that. Um, and, and have they talked to you about the role they see? You said special teams, stuff like that. But have they talked to you about the role that they see you playing? Um, they said just be ready to go when I get there. They say um, Coach Osweiler, the running backs coach, he said um, he really emphasized the special teams. So he said... When I get there, I'll probably participate in a special team. So whatever, really, whatever they need me to do, I'll be ready to go. He didn't say exactly what I was going to do. He just said, be ready to go when I get here. Well, uh, go ahead. At, at 331 today, I want you tweeting at something. 331 on the dot. Basically. Basically. Let me just say this. You only had, what did I have here? You had 12 carries per game. A touchdown every five carries. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Why didn't they give him 20 a game? Because they were blowing everybody out. He would have had he might have had 50. <laughs> he might have had 50 touchdowns that he done that. We had, we had a lot of um a lot of threats on offense and I played defense as well. Not so. like you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told you if he would have had if he would have had that kind of year in high school everyone would know about that year. Oh, for sure. Yeah. To, the, to this day. Oh. He'd be the Al Bundy of Fairfax, Virginia. That's I'm for sure. Al Bundy of Fairfax, Virginia. <laughs> that's true. Did you ever have three touchdowns in a game? Of course I did. No, you didn't. <laughs> He's lying. Yeah. How many times oh, did you have? Yeah, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight games with three or more touchdowns this year, Lamont. That's absurd. That's absurd. But we can't wait to see you down at UVA. Uh, I can't wait to see you. John's oh, no, I can't in, wait, too. John's going to be in tears most games. His, his wife is going to be giving him the business when you're running. Oh, I know. But this time I can say I know him. That's why I'm cheering. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, we yeah, can't. Yeah, I grew up a UVA fan. Really? Oh, I was a, you know, I was a Corey Alexander fan. I played That's basketball true. there. No, I do remember that. That's used true. To come to our uh, summer league basketball camps. Oh, yeah. This is. But, yeah, now I'm. Here comes I'm the legend. Right now. Here comes the legend. We're going to tell you how good he was on the basketball court. 
Uh, Story for another day. That's right. <laughs> no, Lamont, we can't wait to see you down there. Wish you the best of luck. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure covering you through high school. That's what was it? The best highlight tape around, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it was terrific. Thank you very much for coming out. Yeah, good Thank luck you. to you. We'll see you down in Charlottesville next year for sure. All right. Good. It's, it's been a great three years, four years. Good. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> yes, it has. So, Lamont Atkins, uh, what a career. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> what else can you say about that? You know, I looked up the because I, I, I thought, man, it had to be like a up there in the Virginia State record books. Yeah. No. Really? Somebody had 51 touchdowns in a season. Mm. Rushing. Yeah, but against that level of competition, 6A? Yeah, I think it was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was Cedric Pierman. Mm. You know, went to UVA. I think he went to UVA too, actually. Imagine that. I think Terry Kirby was up there. Didn't Terry Kirby go to UVA too? Okay, UVA's had some players. Goodness, okay. Anyway, let's talk, about, let's talk about some players. Champ played Freedom and South Rider. Now, this game is getting a lot of buzz for a specific reason. So, yeah. let's get to the housekeeping part of it first. Champ wins the game in two overtimes, 100 to 95. Yeah. Um, right, big rivalry game. Their schools are like two miles. For sure. Cleo Green over at Freedom had 24 points, and uh, Zion Collins had 25 points. Yeah, man, Freedom is loving the Collins. Uh, Zach Collins graduated last year, I think. Zach Collins, was, his brother, was terrific, too. Um, Zion, yeah, comes out with 25 points. Not a bad night. Not a bad night. Until you see the other side. Okay, Don Fergala, who we know well. We know well. We talked Friend of the about show. Him. Absolutely. Okay, he may have something to do with some of the music that plays in the background of our highlights. Absolutely. And, and hey, his dad is a tremendous shooting coach. Let's Absolutely. say that. His dad is a hire tremendous him to train shooting coach. I'm about to train my six-year-old twins. You should. Okay, so Don Fergala's stat line, 63 points. His 28 out of 30 free throws, that's the record for consecutive free throws in a basketball game. I went to their opener, a heartbreaking game. They lost on a last second yeah. buzzer beater at the half. This kid is must see TV. Didn't he have 39 in that game? 39 in that game and a losing effort. They haven't lost since. They're 3 and 1 now. Yeah. He's averaging 40 a game. It's unreal. I, now, I'll tell you, I, we talked about it before. Right. I got a chance to see him when he was in eighth grade. Yeah. And at, when I saw him, it, I mean, it just jumps out at you. You look, and he looks like a, like just a different level of person on the court. You right. know what I'm saying? Like he was just so smooth with his handle. His shoot, he could get his shot off at any point that he wants, and it just drops. It's constantly. insane. This is not a six ten high school kid no, 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 no. averaging forty a game. He's five eleven. Yeah. Maybe. May, uh, but he plays big, and when he's out there, he's the best player on the court. Yeah, and we, we talked about it before. If he was six, if he was six feet or above, right. every school in the country would have an offer to him right now. Every school in the country should be having an offer. They should, because it, it's you can't teach what he does. Uh, I'm sure dad might disagree with that. Right, right. Dad might disagree with that, right. but um, no, you can't. And he works out constantly. Constantly. Constantly in the gym. He's a gym rat. The dude... Eats and sleeps basketball. Um, I'm always reluctant to compare, especially high school kids. To if you bring your name into it, we're, we're <laughs> shutting the show down. This is not me. Okay. I, I had no jumper like that. <laughs> but you watch a lot. Of, you watch Steph Curry, yeah. the way that he can shoot the basketball. And he, everyone knows his story. He ended up at, was it Davidson or yeah. Davidson and... You know, he was a guy who wasn't highly recruited. You're seeing, like, a lot of these same parallels. You watch this kid shoot. I watch him just set up at midcourt, and he's shooting jump shots like their foul line extended. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I tell you, when I, the first time I saw him play, the defense started guarding him out at the three-point line. He just broke them down and gets to the basket. Right. They start packing in the paint. He just starts taking threes and making them all over the place. And everybody like, knows he's coming. I mean, this 40 game is... Everyone's got tape on them, and they're saying this is what they're going to do. You they lost know. a lot last year. Yeah. And everyone knows this is the guy they're going to, and he's averaging 40 a game. It, I don't know. It, coaches, there's only one person they're guarding against. Right. You could get, I mean, Zion Brown had 13 in the game. And, you know, I'm not, no slight on any other player, but no. every coach is guarding against Fergala. Right. And he still gets 63. 
Yeah. And you're playing a rival. Like, you know if it, they're guarding somebody, Absolutely. they're guarding him. He's he making six Coach Bill Murray's life real easy right now. Yeah. 63 is absurd. That's ridiculous. That's hard to do on a video game. 63 is flabbergasting. <laughs> right? it's, it's terrific. <laughs> you can't, there's not enough words to come up with about that game. If you haven't seen Dom Fergala, go check him out. You have to. He's, he is a show. And any college that hasn't seen him, here's a tip for you. Go see Champ High School play basketball. You best start paying attention. Rob, some other scores from around the area. So All right. We talked to Matty Royal last week. Yes. Love Matty Royal. You love Matty Royal more than I do at this point because she makes fun of me about my height. <laughs> um, no, I, no she's, you know, she's my favorite player in the area. But they had a game against Potomac Falls on Friday night. So she seemed confident. She, oh yeah, she got yeah. reason to be confident. But so I, I see on Twitter that night. I wasn't at the game, but I see on Twitter. I swear, you know, I love Potomac Falls. Right, I, right, right. Shout out to Sydney Canego. I covered her last year at lacrosse, and Tori Burks is terrific over there too. She's terrific. Sure. Um, but I see on Twitter. I think somebody from the Potomac Falls Athletics uh, Twitter account sent fourteen fourteen in the first half. What's going on here? And like in parentheses. Oakton goes 74 points a game. Oh. You don't want to poke the bear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to poke the bear. I'm pretty sure that tweet was deleted after that. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, it's so great. It's so great that I saw this. I just happened to see it on Friday. It's 14 to 14 after, at halftime. Oakton opens up on a 19 nothing run in the second half. <laughs> they go on to score 40. It's 40 to 10 in the second half. They go on to win 54 24. That I'm not, yeah. You know, I, I like Potomac Falls a lot. Yeah. I just think the tweet was funny <laughs> and the yeah. outcome is like, don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. You yeah. don't want to do that to them. No. But Maddie Royal goes for 18. Delaney Conley goes for 11. And Kaylin Fee, 15. She hits threes, three threes in that game. Yeah. Kaylin Fee. Not giving you the props, Maddie Royal. Kaylin Fee. <laughs> um, no. It, uh, a couple other teams in the area, Herndon, they continue to roll. Okay. Still undefeated. They beat Woodgrove 64-35 last week. Divine Newman, I want to say she's a junior this year. Maybe she's a senior. But I, I talked to her grandfather at a game last yeah. year. Yeah, I talked to her grandfather at a game last year. It might have been the herndon Oakton game, actually. Um, but Divine Newman, she's just jumped up this year she's 22 i think she's averaging over 20 a game i mean she's getting it done and indy sanders we talked to uh, you know when we talked to maddie royal last week she her great. and indy are going That's to great. american together but um yeah and he's she's a terrific point guard in the year she handles everything well but divine newman like i said shout out to her grandfather he's a <laughs> funny dude we talked for a while during that game last year um but they go on they beat her, they beat woodgrove 64 30 weird that people's grandparents are starting to get closer in age to us shut up <laughs> see people's grandparents i'm like wait a minute you're not old enough to be a grandparent they're like oh you could be one too speak for yourself yeah it's crazy speak for yourself i am i'm spry <laughs> anybody who uses spry is probably too old to be doing it um yeah there's terrific basketball going on in the area there's some great games going on this week leading yeah, up holiday to, tournaments leading up to the holiday tournaments those. yep um before we go there's been a lot of talk about like all selection teams coming out for the yeah. area and stuff let me just say this any team that don't have daniel to on there i can't rock with nope um there's no yeah, no any team that doesn't have daniel to on that team i can't rock with yeah well our rubber run you know all season team is going to be out soon so our all b squad is going to be up next week That's so right. um stay tuned for that check yep. it out it'll be it'll be entertaining if nothing else <laughs> it will be yeah uh, well, thanks for tuning in. You know, you can always see us on RubberRunSports.com, Channel 2 in Prince William County, Comcast Local, Channel 28 in Reston. And we will leave you with Play of the Week. Man, we, you know what? Dom, Dom 63 points. That's the That's Play it. of the Week. Boom. Dom 63. Yeah. See you next week. That's absurd. <laughs>